It's time. From the Personal Liberty Digest Studios, which feature a lovely view of Dominique Strauss-Kahn's cell at Rikers Island, I'm Ben Crystal, and this is the Great Eight for the week of May 21st. Raise the curtain, kiddies. Here's your Great Eight. Donald Trump's latest 15 minutes are up. The reality television star has decided not to pursue the Republican nomination for president in 2012. However, reports indicate that Joe Biden has been negotiating with Trump's hair for an <laughs> unspecified role. That looks totally natural, honestly. <laughs> Democrat environmentalists have managed to pressure educational publisher Scholastic into pulling copies of its book, The United States of Energy, claiming the text fails to demonstrate the dangers of coal. Oddly, the same groups did not complain about the distribution of comedian Lori David's pseudoscience text, The Down-to-Earth Guide to Global Warming. Also on the environmentalists' acceptable list, God put the fossils there to confuse you, and The Flat Earth. Careful, you'll fall off. Keith Olbermann, whose new show is set to debut next month on Al Gore's Current TV, is making the talk show rounds. Olbermann visited David Letterman's chat fest, where he discussed his return to the news business, confusing audience members who thought you have to have been in the news business to return to it. <laughs> Meanwhile, Gore is excited, promising advertisers that Olbermann's presence should boost viewership to seven or possibly even eight people. <laughs> Total. Spanish researchers claim to have developed a new blood test which can determine how many years you have left alive. Accuracy of the test was confirmed when they tried it on the New York Times credibility and it responded, 1958. <laughs> the U.S. Navy has announced the latest of their Lewis and Clark class cargo ships will bear the name of deceased United Farm Worker Union leader Cesar Chavez. Trouble arose, however, when the ship left port, then immediately went on strike until the Navy erects a Saul Alinsky statue at Annapolis. And President Obama announced his endorsement of Palestinian demands that their homeland next to Israel should be defined by the borders as they existed in 1967, before Israel's territorial gains in their defense of two Arab-led wars to annihilate the Jewish state. Although many questioned the wisdom of selling out the U.S.'s top strategic ally in the region just to appease Islamofascism, Obama did receive support from Mahmoud Ahmadinejad, Jimmy Carter, Louis Farrakhan, and Eric Cartman. <laughs> Got a little so. Former Vice President Dick Cheney's memoir, In My Time, will be hitting the shelves in late August. His publisher has announced a nationwide book tour, but has set some ground rules. No pushing, no shouting, and no standing in front of the Vice President when he's ready to fire. <laughs> And the TSA has responded to reports of one of their officers being caught stealing luggage. They're actually planning an ad campaign around the incident. The TSA. Hey, at least we've stopped molesting six-year-olds. <laughs> and that's your grade eight kiddies for the Personal Liberty Digest. I'm Ben Crystal saying good night, America. We love you.